Um, it's the second edge is 15 and 14. Read it again and last two. Okay. Uh, verse 8, verse uh, 15 and 8. I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Right, so whatever wickedness you commit, the Lord's not, he's not winking at it no more. He's not winking at you no more. He's like, now I'm about to unleash, I'm about to give him the green light to my son to destroy you, man. And the men, his elect men are going to have that, that, uh, uh, that privilege too. Um, Behold, the innocent and righteous blood cried unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. Come down to 14. Uh, verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. All right, beware to the world. All right, that's what our job is to come out here and warn you people. To give you this message. A message that your churches ain't giving you, man. A message that America's not giving you. Your own government is not preparing you for what's about to come. They're not warning you. So the, the, in, in reality, they don't care about you people, man. They want to see you destroyed. For the sword and the destruction draw it not. And one people should stand up to fight against another. And swords in their hands. Right, so there, there's going to be uh, wars here in America. Right? There's going to be different, uh, like, organizations of groups of people that are going to fight against another city. You know what I'm saying? A uh, race riots. That's that's all gonna happen. It's all through prophecy. And these 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 prophecies are they, these these prophecies that we tell you about. They're not just made up. They're out of the Bible. Or what you watch on the movies. They're not just made up. They get those ideas from the Bible, man. They don't only get them from the Bible. They get them from history, from prior kingdoms that were. Uh, 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 at great stature, but now what happened before they, they fell? All those different things were happening. Cannibalism, uh, uh, rapings, babies dying. So, what you see on the movies, man, it's, it's for real. They're just showing you, especially now in our time right now, all they're showing you is, is things that have to do with the end. So Esau, He's using his his his, uh, his tool, the media, to show you what is about to happen. Because he knows that he's about to go to war. He knows it. He knows that there's war about to happen. It's at the horizon. He knows it. But you both, you, you like the brothers say, you you, you dumbified Americans. Y'all don't even y'all don't even consider that. And if you do, you actually think you're gonna make it out. That it's only gonna happen for. Two days, three days, a week, a month. But y'all don't think that it's gonna it's gonna be all right. This y'all don't actually think that this is the end of America. That it's the it's the end of the so-called white man's rulership. But y'all don't know that. Y'all don't even know who runs the world. And if you do, you're scared to say it. It says for those uh, for that. I'm gonna start again at 15. For the sword and the destruction draw a knife, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men, and evading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. Right, so the, 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 the authorities, they're not gonna have no power over the people once the spirits put on them to fight, kill, destroy. They're not gonna care what they have to say. They're gonna, they're gonna be made a prey. The authorities are gonna be a prey. Hey, well, there's a good example. Remember that uh, that man in uh, Miami? That you know everybody believed it was a zombie apocalypse, but there was a, that was a certain spirit the Most High put on that man to act that way. You know, and and you're gonna be seeing that that type of mentality that that man had, or that spirit that was put on him. That's gonna be running throughout the whole world, and you can't stop people like that. You remember they had to shoot him like four times? Four times to kill just one man. You know, but I mean, it was allowed to where, you know, Esau did his thing, but in those days, you know, like the brothers speaking about all these things are gonna happen, that mentality is gonna be on everybody. Uh, how you say, uh, uh, kill or be killed. And it's a lot, and it's a whole different ball game when 
you're in that state of mentality to where you're running for your life. People are more crazy. Are, you, gonna, are you hungry? Yeah. You're starving? Yep. You're thirsty? Yep. They, they do, people, that's the thing about the day of the Lord, man. Everybody is going to see who they really are in that day. Even the, the men of the, the brothers, man, the men of the Lord. Everybody's going to see who they are. Every man of the Lord that's on the highways yeah. and the byways is going to be tested. Mm -hmm. That's our ultimate test, especially when the mark of the beast is implemented, mm -hmm. the RFID chip. Right now, what we're going through, it ain't nothing compared to what's about to come. And that's what, and you know, it says, like we're reading on it, that all these additions, you know, I was thinking about this too, because I hadn't been thinking about it for a little bit, but like it says in Matthew, where it says um, uh, that pray that your flight be not on the Sabbath, like it's the Sabbath in the winter, too, I think it's the winter. Well, you also got to think about the, uh, the elements. You have to worry about your life, running away from people, but also the, the cold, the hot, the heat, the thirst, you know, first, the shelter. You know, what are you going to do in those days? Because all these great things are going to be happening to where you're not going to know what to do. And like the brother said, two-thirds of y'all, y'all actually think you have a chance. Like, y'all actually are persuaded in your own mind that you're going to make it out of this thing. You know, like the whole, uh, the rapture, whatever. You know, you're not exempt. Uh, I'm going to get this. Matthew chapter 10, uh, verse uh, 17. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. Right. Going back to the same thing, how, how, uh, how are you going to be fed or what, what have you? When those days come, we're not supposed to worry about those things. The Lord is going to take care of us, but it's something to think about and to put, and, and, and like the scriptures say, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. So these are terrible things, and they should put instill fear in your heart to tell you, all right, how do I get right for me to be protected? Because these, these things are true what they're saying. These things are going to happen, what they say, what these brothers, these men on the street say. Okay? But when you come into the in the into the uh into the sanctuary Yahweh Yahweh Shai, you you can't worry about none of that. You gotta put your trust and hope in Yahweh Shai that he's gonna take care of you. And and, and uh the scriptures tell you he's gonna take care of you. Get a wisdom of Solomon 2 and 1. And we we we, we spoke about this at prior weekends ago that the most high will take care of those that put their, their trust in him. Uh, was, uh, wisdom of Solomon, uh, three and one. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter three, verse one. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of the Most High, and there shall no torment touch them. All right. So our hands, if we're if we're found to be the elect, we ain't got nothing to worry about. We ain't got to worry about the weather. You know, those that are, that, that are not part of that elect, that's they got to worry about that. Most High is going to take care of us. We'll read it again. It says, But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of the Most High, and there shall no torment touch them. Right, there shall no torment touch them. To the point of death. They ain't going to die. I mean, we're, if we're the elect, we're not going to die. In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die, and their departure is taken for misery. And they're going from us to be, and they're going from us to be utter destruction. But they are in peace. For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. Right, being a little chastised. Right. But the, the coming destruction, these, these, uh, these great plagues, is going to be bad out here. It's going to be very horrible, man. Now, like I said prior, the scriptures say, for knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Now, the elect are going to be persuaded in their own mind to come. They're going to be drawn by the Spirit to come into this sanctuary. It's true. But once you come in, you have a better hope. You have a more sure hope 
of escaping these things than the people in the world, man. It says, for though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. For the Most High proved them and found them worthy for himself. As gold in the furnace that he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine. They shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. Right, so in, in our day of our visitation, the Lord is going to redeem us, take us up in a chariot, and we're going to be made, like, like the scriptures say, we're, we're, uh, we're fishers of men right now. But then we're going to come back as hunters. Weeding, we're going to be weeding and plucking out the wicked with the angels in Yahweh Shai. That's going to be your privilege, your reward of taking part in that uh, in that ordeal, in that, in that, in that, you know, with the most I had stored up for his son Yahweh Shai. Because that's what the, the 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 wicked are planning on doing to you, on with us. So we got to have the mindset, but it's going to be for righteousness. Theirs is on wicked unrighteousness. It's uh, Jeremiah 51 and uh, 19. The portion of Jake, uh, or verse 20, it says, Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse, the horse and his rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. All right, we're going to have spiritual powers. The Mosai is going to put his spirit of, 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 of vengeance and fury in us in order to do those things, to so accomplish that, that prophecy. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman, and with thee will I break in pieces old and young, and with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock, and with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen, and with thee will I break in pieces captains, captains and rulers. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, of the Lord. Right, America. Uh, wisdom, of Solomon. Uh, wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 7. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. They shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people. Right, it's going to be our, our reward, our privilege to be to take part at that table with Yahweh Shai. That's a promise to us, to the elect, if we stay faithful. Now, if we're found unfaithful, we're going to be destroyed. Uh, they shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people, and their Lord shall reign forever. Right, and Yahweh Shai is going to reign forever. Now, you go to the book of Daniel. It says that the saints are going to take the kingdom forever and ever and ever. Right? What kingdom? This earth. They're going to take it back, man. Rulership. And Lord Yahweh Shai is going to be our king forever. He's going to be over us forever. There ain't going to be no prequel, or there's not going to be no sequel of an arch enemy rising back up and overthrowing uh, uh, Israel again, like they show in the movies. Now, this. This is this is this is this truth is this, this truth this word is, is no lie. It's it's firm, man. It's a promise. Yahweh Shai, he ain't a liar. Like men. Uh, Say one and nine. What do you imagine against the Lord? He will make an utter end. Affliction shall not rise up the second time. There you go. Affliction ain't gonna rise again the second time. Now the heathen, the ones that are under us, they're gonna be our slaves. Right? It's only just. But it's going to be done according to righteousness, not unrighteousness. Oh, this is Revelation chapter 2, verse uh, 20, I'm going to start at 25. But that which you have already, hold fast till I come. All right, we got to hold fast to this truth, to this word, man, to the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. We got to hold fast to it, hold on to it. Like if it was the only, like, it is the only thing you got. It, this is the only thing that us brothers have. And it, everything else don't matter. Everything else ain't gonna save us. Our woman ain't gonna save us. Our kids ain't gonna save us. 
Our friends ain't gonna save us. So-called friends, associates, our money, gold, whatever you have, ain't gonna save you. So we gotta hold fast to this. And he that, and, and, but that which you already have, have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. So Yahweh Shai is giving, telling us this promise. He received it. He received the same thing from his father that he's willing to give to those that are the elect, that endure to the end. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 9. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. Right, and we understand the truth. The other ones are blind, like Isaiah said. They hear but understand not. They see but they perceive not. It's all spirituality. They don't understand. They can't comprehend. You two-thirds, y'all can't comprehend this truth. Y'all are wicked, man. The Lord ain't dealing with you. Um, they that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. And such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints. Right, that's who, that's who grace and mercy is to. His saints, the elect. That's who this truth is for. Not for everybody. Now everybody can come, but we're gonna tell you your proper, your proper nationality and your proper judgment. Y'all can come, the Japanese, Chinese come, and we're gonna tell you the truth. A two-third, you're gonna come and we're gonna tell you the truth. But the truth ain't for everybody. His mercy only abides on the heads of the elect. The rest of you, y'all just think y'all got mercy. The Lord makes you believe that. Yahweh Shai sent that spirit to make you believe that. Uh, for grace and mercy is to his saints, and he had care for his elect. That's who he cares about, the elect. Now the elect, they're not gonna meet none of those torments, those plagues. They're gonna see them. They're gonna see it happening to their enemies, to the, to the two thirds, to the heathen. Okay? You know, uh, real quick, do you remember that test, that test that was put on uh, GMS homework a, a while back? It was, uh, uh, it was a Galatians test. One of the questions they asked was, uh, you can help me out, uh, they said, uh, who is the, the, the God? Who is the who is the Israel of God? Is that how it went? Pretty much. Who? God of Israel. No, who? who the Israel of God. Yeah, who is the Israel of God? And uh, the answer was the elect, because that's the only one he cares. Well, that's all the scriptures talk about. Like in Isaiah, the beginning of Isaiah, he said, "Except that I had left a small remnant, according to according to my uh, to my heart." You know, he's talking about the elect. And I was thinking about this just now. You know, the whole thing with Abraham and Lot, because you, you know, he brought the example about the Asian or the Chineses and, and Japanese. Well, Lot, he was dealt with, right? You know, the most I delivered him out of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, but Lot had his, uh, Lot, he had those children, but, which became uh, Ammon and Moab, which became the, uh, the Chinese and Japanese. But the whole, uh, the whole promise went to who? Abraham. You know, it's just, even though Lot was dealt with, and the Most High was merciful to him and did things for him. It does I mean, yeah, he dealt with them, but he brought the people he was dealing with. That's who he cared for. That's who the Most High was dealing with ultimately, the elect, which was Abraham. You know, even the Most High, he, like the brother we were speaking about earlier, the Most High, at every point in time, at every certain point in time in history, the Most High gave these other nations their time to rule. Did he not? Like it says in Daniel chapter two, I set up kingdoms and I take and I bring them down. It was, a, it was a certain point in time, it was allowed that the Persians could rule, the Greeks could rule. And uh, I remember we were talking about it, this brother would talk to me about it, how like, it was like the Most High was allowing these other nations to rule, you know, to see if they were gonna do right, but they didn't. We, it was all set up, we know they weren't. It's like like this little analogy. It's like, a, um, uh, there's a house and it's up for rent, right? You can't, you can't buy it. But maybe in, in the process of time, when those landlords see that, okay, he is worthy, he, he is gonna take care of this house and we'll give it up to self to him, right? But basically when you rent that house, it's like they're leasing it out to you. 
So you can't do whatever you want to the house. You gotta take care of it, right? Because if you start abusing it, what happens? 